Greetings cherished viewers, and welcome to another enriching episode on Our Story for God's Glory, where every story we share is a testament to the unwavering love and power of our Almighty. Today, we're not just inviting you to listen to a sermon, we're inviting you on a spiritual expedition. Together, we'll embark on a journey through the scripture, led by the insightful preaching of Todd Hoskins. His sermon, deeply anchored in Colossians chapter 1, is more than a message. It's a call to deepen our roots in Christ, to solidify our faith, and to connect more profoundly with our spiritual family. In a world that often feels as tumultuous as a raging sea, today's sermon is a lighthouse, a beacon of hope, guidance, and peace. As we prepare to dive into this powerful message, let's silence the noise around us, still our hearts, and focus our minds on the Word of God. May this be a time of renewal, reflection, and revival. Whether you're seeking comfort, strength, or encouragement, know that you're in the right place at the right time. Have them back. Tonight I want to preach out of Colossians. I, I feel like I have something a little different tonight. And I'm, I'm going to try to do, I am going to do some teaching in Jesus' name. But I have some preaching that I need to do too. But I can tell you, there is some information that I want to educate you with. It's going to take me a second to read it. So I will teach a little bit. And then there's some pieces and parts that I just need to go on and preach a little bit. But I feel like this is going to be good. Praise God. Colossians chapter 1 in your Bible, if you have it. If you have your Bibles tonight, everybody say, I got it. Let's read together in concert. Are we ready? Read at my pace. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ and my flesh for his body's sake, which is, let's read verse 23 together. If you continue, saints, come on now. What happened? What I had said was, let's read together. Let's go. If you continue in the faith, And which was preached to every creature. That sounded incredible. Thank you, God, for your word tonight. Thank you for your blessings in advance. Thank you for what you're doing all over this church. From front to all the way to the back, God, all the way to the Dunamis Center. And Father, when the weather breaks, the Pentecostal Pavilion, and when ground breaks, the Children's Chapel. Thank you, God, for your goodness. We give you praise, glory, and honor in the name that is above every name. And everybody said amen and amen. And by the way, really quick, before we clap our hands, don't go anywhere. Before we clap our hands, I'm hoping if Brother Gary can, can get this together because it has to be weather permitting, Sunday night, maybe just after service or before service, we want to meet out in the parking lot because I want to show you how tremendously big this new building is going to be. And you cannot look at it on that paper out there, but I'm telling you, we've got it marked. When you walk out here and you see the cones where the four corners are gonna be and where you walk out and where the bathrooms are, y'all, I'm telling you right now, he set this thing up the other day and he walked out. I said, oh my Lord, my vision has been renewed. I am excited. We gotta do this for the church. We gotta do this for the church. So brother Gary, if the weather permits, if the weather permits, I'm going to come in here at 15 after 6 and just tell everybody, let's go. Let's go look at this so you can grasp what God's about to do in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's clap our hands for the reading of the Word of God. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated in the house of God. I, I want to preach for a few moments tonight. Uh, foundations like a redwood. I believe if we're ever living in a day and hour when we need one another and Sister Gibbons prayed exactly into the vein where I'm preaching and I thought, oh my Lord, you are incredible. It is now. If we ever need a time where we need more encouragement instead of bad news, if we need more in the pipeline of strength and hang on and hold out and don't give up, it is now because you can find at least 
when we leave here, I'm sure, with everything they anticipate that's going to happen, you turn on the news, it's Syria, it's, it's, it's Israel, it's Hamas, it's Hezbollah, it's Russia, it's China. It, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. But I'm telling you, saints of God, there is a depth that you can ascertain. There is a joy and a peace that you can have, Brother Doug, that surpasses all understanding, Parnell. There's a peace, and I'm not talking about a peace out here where it's quiet. It feels peaceful and safe. Thank you, God. I mean, that kind of peace that's way down deep in your soul. You just say, thank you, God. I'm thrilled tonight for the goodness of God. I'm thrilled for what he's doing. I feel a renewal in my spirit. A renewal in my calling. I cannot explain it. I can just tell you it's how I feel. It's how I anticipate it. I'm not going into any deeper information than that. But I'm just praying, pressing, pushing, and saying, God, whatever you have, let's go on and do it. While you tarry, let's go on and do it. Praise God. And I got my grandbabies in service tonight, and I'm thankful for that. Let me just say this really quick. And, and if you don't hear from God and get encouraged, uh, my, my daughter-in-law, Erica, was, was back in the office on Sunday night, and she looked at me and she said, you know, when you were up there singing tonight, I, just out of nowhere, Holland took his hand and starts going like this. And I said, come on, oh, I'm telling you, that did something to the inside of my soul. I said, I said come on, Jesus, just get right on in. So I want to preach for a few moments tonight on foundation. If, if you were reading along with us, and if you paid attention really to what we were reading and not just how we read it and trying to be all great and correct, grammatically, dramatically, and all of that good stuff. But if you stop to think about, you know, it's like singing songs in here. You know, you can sing a song where you're just trying to sing good, but you're not, you're not hearing, you're not getting what you're singing. So I don't want that to happen to you, so I'm going to read it for you. If, if you continue in the faith. How are we going to do that? Grounded and settled. If you continue in the faith. How? Grounded and settled. Be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard, which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. I want to talk about the Redwoods tonight. I want to tie this together because this is going to be fun. To someone who has never seen one, a Redwood, must be seen to be something from a tall tale. And I'm going to tell you why. These redwoods average eight feet to as much as 20 feet in diameter, some as tall as 375 feet. That is a tree taller than the Statue of Liberty from the base of the pedestal to the tip of the torch. This is a tree so large around that it can fit a greyhound bus through it. Absolutely the largest living thing on earth, in fact, if you look at one of the tallest, if not the tallest building downtown, which is the Kettering Tower, it's 400 feet tall, 405 feet, excuse me, tall. A redwood can get as tall as 20 feet away from that, 385 feet. Can you imagine how big that is? Let me keep going. Redwoods have some of the most varied and intricate survival strategies, and here's how. The bark of a coastal redwood is very thick, as much as a foot, the bark, as much as a foot in places. It exhibits an unusual property when exposed to fire. It chars into a heat shield. It actually turns into a pretty effective ablative, similar to the way a heat shield on a re-entry vehicle works. The chemical composition of the tree itself is apparently distasteful or even poisonous to normal tree pests, like termites and ants. That is why it was used as the first layer of boards in a wall because termites and carpenter ants won't burrow into it. In the 30s to the early 60s, redwood was used as a separator between the plates of electric, electrolytic, which is auto truck and airplane batteries. The wood could withstand the battery acid and still retain its shape. Hang in there with me now, church. I'm going to teach to you. And redwood is very resistant to water-associated rot. So it's not, it's not going to rot or mold. It is not uncommon to drill a well in a creek bed in this area and end up drilling right, in, right through a redwood log that may have been buried there for thousands of years. Here's what I want to get right here. The root system of the redwood. you got to get this. The root system of the redwood tree is surprisingly shallow especially given the great height 
the mature tree attains. There's no tap root, and the other roots may reach no deeper than 6 to 12 feet. And that is about 12 feet here down to the floor, not the altar area, the floor. That's about 12 feet. So that's about as far from 6 to 12 feet. That's what information gives. The major roots are about an inch in diameter, and they typically spread 50 to 80 feet. So instead of going down as far as they do, they go that way, all the way around itself, 60 to 80 feet. Oh, I'm going somewhere right here. One way in which the trees are able to remain upright for millennia is by growing close together, is by growing close together with other redwood trees intermingling their root systems. Come on, David. Come on. Come on, Wayne. Come on, brother. Uh, Danny, come on. Come on, brother. Come on, WC. Come on, Doug. Come on, Parnell. Come on, John. Come on, Brother Bill. You, you got to have Brother Bill up here. <laughs> come on, Brother Gibbons. Come on, Brother Steve. Come on. Come on, Bruce. Come on, Nathan. Come on, guys. Put your trotting shoes on. Trot on up. I want you to separate and put about six feet between you. And you, you're more than welcome to separate up on the, however you got to do this to get, how, however, Bruce, you're good. You're good. Now, I want you to look at this. I want you to see it. I want you to watch it. All of these guys are separated. This is how I'm going to start my sermon. I've already started it, but I'm going to start preaching right here in a minute. If, if the Lord will help me. If not, I'll just continue to flow with the Spirit. Amen. Right now, Brother Parnell can be moved pretty easily if I try to. I can move. Well, thank you, Parnell, for not giving me resistance. John can move. <laughs> Danny can move. Right? All of these guys. Don't you mess with me, Doug. Doug can move. <laughs> David, don't play. David can move. All of these guys can be moved. Praise God. I was daring one of them, too. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Praise God. I might be old, but I ain't old. <laughs> now, I want you guys to come together. I want you to come together. I want you to lock arms. I want you to wrap your arms around each other. I want you to get as close as you can. And I, I just want you to really wrap up. I want you to wrap up. That's it. That's it. That's it. I mean, I want you to be serious about it because these are redwoods. And what redwoods do is from 60 to 80 feet around them, 6 to 12 feet deep, about an inch is the biggest root system. And what they do at 385 feet tall. Think about that. 8 to 20 feet in diameter that you can drive a bus through it, and it's only deep 6 to 12 feet. But it goes this way, and it grabs on, and it holds on. There are guys I pushed around a second ago, but now what they've done is reached across, and they have gravitated together, and they've created strength in their numbers. So the same guy that I'm going to push around named Parnell that's in the root system is not going to push like he did a second ago. The same, God, the same guy right here, the guy that I thought, you know, I pushed him pretty easily. He just pushed right back. I can't get him like I could a second ago. Oh, WC, come on. You was ready for me to mess with you, weren't you? Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Not now. Not now. And Danny is holding on for dear life. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, by look, his teeth are gritting and everything. He can't even already talk. He's holding on. This is what happens. Because there are things in life that are going to come at you that's meant to try to push you away or move you away from the hope. Move you away from the hope. But when you get rooted and grounded, when you stand and say, I am so connected that a bus could drive through me, but it ain't going to kill me because I'm connected to somebody. That's right. What did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? I am the vine and you are the branches. And branches hold on. And branch, when the wind blows, the root system just says, I'm not moving. That is the power. I don't want you to ever forget that. Because if you decide, if you decide, Brother John, to loose yourself from the root system and move away from the hope. Come on, come on, let them go. And you move away from the hope. Guess what's going to happen? 
Something is going to come along and just knock you around. Something is going to come along and move you everywhere until you get back to the right place and get yourself locked back in and rooted and grounded in the faith. I only picked on John because I knew John was going to roll with me and not give me resistance. Thank you, John. Praise God, you little submissive self. Hallelujah. I love you and Carla. Thanks, guys. This is like the root system. Isn't that good? Praise God. I know I didn't spend a lot of money on that prop. I didn't bring trees in and connect it all together. <laughs> My labor force is pretty cheap. Hallelujah. Wait a second. They're not cheap. They're free. <laughs> There's a difference between free and cheap. Hallelujah. We ain't cheap. <laughs> now, yeah, thank you in the back. <laughs> yeah, that's my friends. <laughs> I want you to look at something because I'm going to take you on a bit of a journey, and this is going to kind of turn the atmosphere a little bit because I want to talk about root systems. I want you to understand how powerful it is to know what you're connected to. What are you connected to? What is it that takes most of your time? What is it that takes most of your energy? What is it in the soil that keeps you standing? What is it that keeps you firmed up? What is it that you are connected to that's going to keep you when the storms of life and the floods come and the rains hit and the hail and the snow and the depth of everything that goes on? What is it that helps you to keep on living? Deuteronomy 29, 18. I want you to get this. This is good. Deuteronomy 29, 18. This is Old Testament. Lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations. Lest there should be among you a root. Look at that word. Lest there be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. Now, that may not mean a thing to you whatsoever until you look up gall and until you look up wormwood. I want you to think about this because here's what the Bible is saying in Deuteronomy. Lest there should be among you a man or woman, family, tribe, whose heart turn away this day from the Lord to go and serve the gods of these nations. Lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. There are going to be people that turn away. There are going to be people that back up, back down, quit. There are going to be people that put their hand on the plow and looking back and they're not fit for the kingdom. That is exactly what the word of God says. And the fact is, saints of God, there are those people that they have that, that, that it comes among us, these roots that bear gall and wormwood. Let me tell you what wormwood is. And this is what you have to get. The word wormwood is actually bitterness. Most people that quit or turn back are most definitely always bitter about something. Before they can get bitter, they have to be better to know what bitter is. And before they can ever engage and get that reversed and get help from the body of Christ and get help from the root system and hold on by hanging on where their hope is grounded and settled and rooted, they don't get better, they get bitter. And they get bitter about things that have happened. They see casualties that have gone on. They play clips in their mind. They play conversations they've heard in time past. And instead of getting better and getting over it, it's a regurgitation of the bitterness all the time. And that is what the Bible says is wormwood. It's right there in Deuteronomy 29 and 18. That beareth, that, that beareth gall and wormwood. I just want to pick on wormwood because it's, it's, it's bitterness. And it's where people get where they get themselves in trouble. I have over my lifetime tried to stay away from this. If something happens that I get frustrated with somebody, I, I just go try to talk to them. I just go try to work it out with them. I try to be understanding. I'm sympathetic. I'm empathetic. I'm all of those pathetics. Hallelujah. Because I don't want to get pathetically bitter. Hallelujah. I want to keep, keep my heart right because I know if that, if that guy's going to heaven then chances are, you know what God's going to do? He's going to put our mansions next door to each other. And he's going to say, what I tried to tell you down there is work it out so when you got up here, whatever you loose there is going to be loose here and whatever you bind there is going to be bound over here. I just want to tell you, saints of God, that the fact is you've got to stay away from bitterness. 
I don't want to be bitter about a preacher. I don't want to be bitter about a church. When I feel myself getting frustrated, I've got to start praising the Lord. I've got to start thanking God for his goodness. I don't want to be mad at people. I don't want to be mad at a group of people. And let me tell you the philosophy of a lot of politicians today is if I can't have them, I'm going to kill them. And let me tell you how you kill something if you can't just obliviate it right away. You can divide it and then you conquer it. Hallelujah right there. That's why the enemy has come up with Republican and Democrat and Libertarian and, and the list goes on and on and on and elephants and donkeys and sheep, the lambs. <laughs> That's why the enemy has made such a big deal out of brown, light brown, tan, white, light skin, dark skin, real black, real brown, super white, freckles, whatever you want to say. That is why the enemy has propagated such mess in America because if he can't get us, he'll divide us, then he'll conquer us. That's why as long, there is, as, long as there is a divided states of America, people are going to be bitter. And bitterness is spewed every single day. You can go on talk radio, you can go on television, on major news networks. They are on there to be on one side or the other. All the Republicans watch this one, all the Democrats watch that one. All the Democrats get their way on that station, all the Republicans get their way on that one. The Republicans tear down the Democrats, the Democrats tear down the Republicans, and before you know it, you've got America divided. And then they put the blacks over here and the whites over there, not in this church anymore. In Jesus' name. Woo! Come on, Jesus, and help me right here. Oh, we love you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, I love to preach on this. And just so I just so I make it real plain with everybody, because everybody talking about he's a white Jesus. He ain't no white Jesus. Everybody talking about he a black Jesus with an afro. He ain't no black Jesus with an afro. And don't edit this video. Hallelujah. He is a Jewish Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> just so I can help everybody out. Let me just go on to pick a little bit more while I'm at it, Brother Ronaldo. Amen. Just so you know on the color chart, black and white is actually not a color. Hallelujah. Everybody fighting about color and we're not even a color. Can I preach on right now? Am I making any sense to anybody? Do you see how the enemy wants to divide the church? He wants to divide everybody up. And the Bible is constantly trying to bring us together. God only came down because the enemy was so brave that when they started to build the Tower of Babel, whether you think it's astrological or whether you know that they were building it so that God couldn't create another flood again and we'll fix him or however that they wanted to reach the heaven, theologically whatever you believe, it's where God came down and said, I've got to confound the language and I have my opinions about it. But you've got to know that by the time Acts chapter 2 hit, you know that that blood was shed for Gentiles, the Greeks, the Scythian, the bond, the free, the black, the white, the, the everybody, to the Jew first, then the Gentile. That's all of us. That's us colorless people, black and white. Amen. Come on. Woo. Man, I'm having fun preaching tonight. I told you we was going to get educated. The fact is, saints of God, please understand the root system. Those trees don't look at each other and say, what color a tree are you? They all say, if we don't stick together, we've fallen over because we're not deep enough to go by it on our own. Ain't nobody asking how big you is. Ain't nobody asking how much water can you handle. Ain't nobody asking how much money do you have. They all said, we got to stick together. Ask these guys on the stage. They weren't looking at who was next to them. They were just trying to hang on for dear life because things are going to come against you. Saints of God, if the church doesn't stick together, if we keep making it about how you get baptized, I came to tell you how you get baptized has no reflection on whether you make it to heaven or not. Ask the man on the cross that did not get baptized and that did not speak in tongues and did not get a certificate for it. But he said, today you will be with me in paradise. My God, I feel like kicking my shoes off and preaching. It is about the blood. It is about an empty tomb, an upper room, but it 
it started out a cross. Man, I wasn't going to preach tonight. And I'm not being facetious. Woo, Jesus. My God, it's Wednesday night and I feel the spirit of revival in the atmosphere. I feel God moving in the house tonight. I feel his glory resting on the house. I feel like we've walked into a fresh anointing. I say glory. I say glory. Come on, men of God. Come on, women of God. Don't get bitter. When the enemy tries to make you bitter against people, go out of your way to love on them. You got a problem with black people? I'd start walking up to every one of them I could find. Strangers. People you know and you don't know. Hey, how you doing? Go out of your way. Hey, how you doing? Hey, y'all have a problem with white people? I'd find every one of them I could. Hey, how you doing? Hey, it's good to see you. Hey, praise God. Hey, praise the Lord. Just love on them. Until you wear that demonic influence out and it won't mess with you anymore. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. There, there's, this, there's this mean man where I go to the gym at. I won't call the name of it out. There's this mean man. He comes in every day and he walks like this. He comes in. Like, I'm telling you, he walks like this when he comes in. I'm not making fun. I'm just the foolishness of preaching. And he just looks like he's ready to stomp somebody. I will, I will purposely stand somewhere where I think he might be coming and just wait on him. And I'll just stand there like I'm waiting to get on a machine. Come on, saints of God. I'm intentional about things. Say what you need to. And I'll wait till he gets close, and I'll try to look at him and say, hey, how you doing? And I have got a few hellos and grunts out of him. But I'm going to keep working on him. He don't know it. He don't know that I have been assigned to his life. He don't know that God out of heaven put it into my heart. You will win him to the kingdom. He don't even know it. He, he paying all that money every month just to come and see me every day. Or three times or four times a week or whenever I get in there just to say, hey, how you doing? Good morning. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's going on? I try to talk to them. Saints of God, listen, the roots have got to stick together. The roots have got to look past what we've been through or where we've been and just appreciate where we are. Because you know what? We're all stuck in the dirt. That means we're in the flesh. We came out of the dirt. But God is about to take this vessel and empty it out with his spirit. And wow, right in the glory will go. Woo, Jesus. Then we'll have a new body like unto the Lord. Can I keep preaching? I told you, this is, this is, this. My preaching might not be good, but this is great information. Praise God. And I assume because you're here, you think I'm okay at least. <laughs> Hebrews 12, 15. Hebrews 12, 15. Looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God. Are y'all with me? You take the grace of God for granted. You go do what you want to do. You want to live your own way. Do your own thing. And you take the grace of God because looking diligently lest any man fail. And the Bible says, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. There are people that are bitter at me that don't even know me. Five amens. So, so you five amens? Thank you so much. Because I needed it. There are people that don't even know me. Are y'all with me? Don't let it happen. Man, I've been aggravated at people. <laughs> I wanted to write them a letter. I've been angry at them. I'm tired of it. I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of all the schism and division. And Solomon said to the women, the two harlots that came in, one with the dead child, one with the live child, which the harlot, the one harlot took the live one, put her dead one next to her and said, oh, no, this is my baby. 
Solomon said, bring me a knife. I'm going to cut them down the middle. And the one harlot said, oh, no, 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 no. Save my baby. Yeah. Solomon said, thank you, mama. Yeah. Give her her baby back. Because yeah. there are people that if they can't have it, they just won't kill it. Yeah. That, that's where we are. That's where, the, this, where this bitterness comes from. That's why I don't, I, don't, I don't really like to listen to talk radio because all they do when they call up, they're looking for the one that's most bitter and that has all the information to back up why he should be so bitter and I'm going to sit here in my pity party of bitterness. Knock it off. You need delivered. Praise God. Tell your neighbor they need delivered. Praise God. A root may be small and slow in its growth in the body of Christ or the church. If it carries poison, it's malignant. It's dangerous to every believer. You've got to watch it. Got to watch it. Can't let everybody speak into you. Can't let everybody influence you. you seriously, you've got to be careful. I went into a church one time. I, I just walked in. I was just minding my own business. I, 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 was, I, I didn't have anything going on. I wasn't. I wasn't prepared to go in there. I had a pair of jeans with gym shoes. I think I had like a dress shirt on. I just happened to be driving through, and I, I thought, you know what, I need to go there. Lord just spoke to me. Go there. Go there. So it's not always me thinking, well, I need to be nice or whatever. Sometimes it's the Spirit of God that says, go in there. I, had, I passed it up. I turned around. I went back. I drove. And uh, I got in there. I sat in the back. I sat in the back. The pastor noticed I was there. In the meantime, someone gets a hold of me, and they start talking. See that one on the stage? This is what they did. See that one over there? This is what they're doing. And um, I, I finally just said, hey, <laughs> hey, I, I'm, I, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm hearing all this. And already I start developing opinion if I'm not careful. Well, he doesn't deserve. And who? Does any of us deserve? When you really think about it? Boy, that'll preach. And I didn't think you'd shout. Within five minutes, the pastor gets up to preach. Just like this, with a microphone. He said, Pastor Todd's here tonight. And this is what he says, come and preach that fast. But, uh, uh, Pastor, hold on, I, I got some poison I need to work out. No, you need to come and preach. Are you all with me? That's how powerful poison can be. Are you all with me? You know what poison does to the body. It does the same to the spirit. Uh, Job 14, 8, though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground. Y'all hearing this? Hear it, hear it. Verse 9. Yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth boughs like a plant. This is good. Come on, guys. What y'all so quiet for? Or is it just that good? It's good, isn't it? It's good. Look, I, some of you have never heard that before. I could tell by the way you just went, oh, Jesus, girl, you hear that? Let me say it again. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the... It's somewhere. My life is coming back. I smell it. My senses say it's happening. I promise you, I promise you, I wanted to preach 10 minutes on that, but I do not have time. Man, that's good. Now, I want you to get this. I want you to get this because now I'm going to have to hurry. Now I'm just reading it to you. The righteous shall not be moved and they'll yield fruit. Go to Proverbs 12, 3. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. You want to impl you want to impress God, live right. <laughs> A man shall not be established by his wickedness. But the Bible says, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. Going down to Proverbs 12, 12, the wicked desireth the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. Three things to be careful of. You'll find it in Matthew 13. This is good. And when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no root and they withered away. Verse 21 of Matthew 13, yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while, for when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, by and by, he's offended. He, wasn't, he didn't have any root. 
couldn't say anything to him at all. He got mad and just withered up and died by and by. He came in, thought he knew everything. Someone said, hey, don't clap so loud. Clap with everybody else. Hey, stop trying to be, you know, stop trying to, to be seen and stop trying to be heard. Just flow with everybody. Oh, I'm offended. I come to praise the Lord. Well, praise him with everybody else at our level and stop screaming like you're a maniac because you're sticking out like a sore thumb. You need to blend in with everybody. This is the body. <laughs> That ain't the way I was brought up to praise. Well, if you were praising with 500 people that act just like you, I get it. But in here, we ain't. It's people like this, that they know everything and you know nothing. And you can't tell them anything. And they, they don't have any depth, obviously, because they go from church to church to church and get offended by and by. Praise God. Stop it right now. I'm not talking to anybody in the church. This is not a subliminal message for you. Don't even drop your head down. Get your chin back up. I don't think I'm talking to anybody in this church. My God, he was preaching to me tonight. I know he was. I just told you I wasn't. So sit up and get your chin back up. I said it. That lying devil. This is good stuff. Verse 29, but he said, nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. You have to be careful how, how you approach things. You have to do it in love so that you're not ripping up the tares uh, with everything else that's. Let me, let me keep preaching. Oh, my Lord, I don't have time. I have a page and a half. I'm, I'm telling you. Look at this. The atmosphere must be right for a redwood. Smile at your neighbor. Say, the atmosphere must be right. <laughs> Weather's role in redwood growth and range is extremely important. The coastal redwoods thrive on and indeed require the heavy fogs that are normal daily occurrences along the coast. Guys, you got to get this. These 300-foot-plus tall giants actually pull moisture into their needles at the top of the tree where the circulation system of the tree can't pump to. The 50, 60 degree average temperature where, uh, of the area are also important to life cycle of these trees. These two conditions are, uh, are, are limits to uh, the modern day range of these awesome giants. But they will never attain their true size and stature without the coastal fogs and temperatures that nurture them. And at the same time keep other competing species such as pines stunted and sodden. Because these things grow up and grab everything it needs before the other little things try to jump in and jack it up. All right, I'm going to hurry. We're in an atmosphere. We're in an atmosphere here. Remember, I was just talking about keeping the atmosphere right, keeping everything flowing together. Every little molecule in the atmosphere makes up the atmosphere. Watch what is in your atmosphere. Because the earth has the right atmosphere, we're able to live here. And by the air, we determine what season it is. We have to dress right and prepare for the right atmosphere. Everything, it's, there's an atmosphere out here. There's an atmosphere in here. Come on, come on, come on. And you cannot let everything in your atmosphere. Ever been a time you were driving down the road and you smelled something in your car? And everybody started to roll the window down because you hit a skunk. And that skunk smell came right up through your frame, went right through your tires, got in your air conditioning. Not long ago, we were driving through the field, and I'm not telling you we didn't hit one skunk. We hit a family of skunks. And I'm to ask Jill, we had that car, and it for eight years, we smelled that skunk. And now and again, we had to roll the window down if it got good and hot because we had to clear the atmosphere. Skunk come back on us. Rest in peace. Hallelujah you got to keep your atmosphere right. If you do not control your atmosphere, someone else will. You can help the atmosphere where you sit and live. The season for you is not going to change. You must learn to change it by the way you respond and live and react. Do not react according to your circumstance. React according to where your purpose and destiny has taken you and react by faith. You think I can make it? You must keep growing. Come on, push your neighbor and say, you're not here to die. You're not here to just survive. You're here to thrive. And I'm not talking about them packets of stuff they take. I'm talking about thriving spiritually. Come on, ain't going to get no help now. 
A live redwood that gets knocked over will attempt to continue growing via its limbs. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even when it gets knocked over, its limbs want to continue to live. Even when it, even when it thinks I'm about to die, the limbs keep on going, I shall live and not die. Do you know why there are lines of beautiful redwood trees? Because they came from one that gave its life but didn't die and kept on shooting up and all of a sudden you've got a beautiful row. It was because it never died. It just kept on sprouting. I dare redemption to stand up and tell your neighbor, you better look out, I'm about to sprout. If undisturbed, if this redwood falls over, if it's undisturbed, the limbs pointing up will turn into trees in their own right. And this is indeed the source of many rows of groups of trees. Cathedral or family groups of trees are simply trees that have grown up from the living remains of the stump of a fallen redwood. And since they grew out of the perimeter, they are organized in a circle. If you look at the genetic information in a cell of each of these trees, you would find that they were identical to each other and to the stump they sprang from. They are clones. You can see some people in my past, and I am a stump from where I came from. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm a, praise God. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not even going to say it. I got to hurry. The Bible says in Matthew 28, 18, you might say, how are you going to bring that into the word? I'm about to tell you right now. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, bap baptizing them, baptizing them. Oh, how do we believe in baptism around here? Well, just read the Bible in Matthew 28, 19, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Whoop. Verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I made it. You know what, Matthew 28, 19, 20, 21? Do you know what other versions of the Bible say? Go and make disciples. 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 Come on, let's stand up all over the church. Turn around and tell about five people. Go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. Woo! Father, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you, God, that we have an incredible church. God, it takes fine-tuning, it takes conversation, it takes communication, it takes prayer, it takes fasting, it takes fellowship, it takes hanging out together. But God, more than anything, one of the things I notice is it takes all of our roots binding up together. And there's people in here that's a little deeper than others. There's some, there's some six feet of root system, and then there's people that are a lot deeper than six feet. Some are new and just barely got some roots in the ground. But God, we're going to hang on to each other because we all need each other. Father, we love you tonight and we bless you and we thank you for your goodness. What a powerful message. As the echoes of Todd Hoskins' sermon linger in our hearts, Let's take a moment to reflect on the profound truths we've encountered. Like the mighty Redwoods, may we too find strength and support in our faith and community, standing tall and unwavering in the face of life's storms. This message serves as a reminder that our growth, resilience, and very survival are intertwined with our willingness to be grounded in Christ and connected with one another. In the days ahead, let's carry these words with us, nurturing the seeds of faith that have been planted today. Let us strive to be steadfast in our beliefs, to grow in love, and to spread the hope of the gospel to every corner of our world. Thank you for joining us today on Our Story for God's Glory. If this sermon has touched your heart, we encourage you to like, subscribe, and share this video with others who may find solace and strength in its message. Stay tuned for more insights and inspirations in our upcoming videos. Together, let's continue to grow in faith and glorify God in all that we do. Until next time, be blessed, stay encouraged, and never forget, you are a vital part of God's glorious story.